Hi, Nick Osborne with the Personal Training Department Blueprint. We're back with our next system to put into place to make your personal training department stand out from everyone else, get some results, and really rock and roll. And it's also designed to help your trainers. We're gonna to talk today about the most controversial out of all the systems. So let's review the systems we have talked about so far. First video, uh, first system is sales. Sales system, gotta have it. Next, professionalism system. Marketing systems, if you've missed any of these videos, go back to our YouTube page, they're listed there. You can go back on our blog, they're all listed there. Life coaching system is next, followed by a hiring system, and our last video was all about a system for staff meetings, why it's important and how to do it, the things to cover in a staff meeting. Today we're gonna to talk, like I said, about the most controversial, but you're gonna see this is where the industry is going. We're gonna talk about developing a pre-designed exercise belief system, if not, an outright uh, exercise system for your club. Now, trainers always hate this at the beginning, and we can go into the million of reasons why, but for the most part, they're all BS. What we're gonna talk about is first, is having a belief system. You don't wanna try to be everything to everybody and have individuals walking around the club doing whatever they want, however they want, whenever they want. That's a death nail for your business. So, what we're gonna talk about is the belief system in your club. When someone comes in and talks to your fr front desk, someone comes in and asks your trainer, how do I lose 20 pounds? What is the answer? Okay, I'm gonna show you a short video of what that answer is at most clubs. Can you tell me how to lose 20 pounds? Well, I want you to run about 50 to 75 miles a week and eat nothing but nothing but nothing but carbs. You don't need to lose 20 pounds. Do it fine just the way you are. Yeah. You got to bench heavy, squat heavy, and deadlift heavy, and you got to eat at least 4,000 calories to maintain your metabolism and lose the weight. Yeah. We're gonna get you on a six-day a week, two-hour aerobic program. Take it to the front, get you all the supplements you can take. Woo! Come on! Thank you for asking. What we're going to do is two hours of yoga every day. And then we're going to stop eating all meat and go strictly vegetarian. And then every two weeks you're going to go on a two-day liquid fast. I think that'll help. Ah. Well... Most importantly, you got to do a lot of reps, lift a lot of weight, and eat a lot of protein. And the best thing of all, you better love yourself. As you can see, that's not beneficial to your club. And believe it or not, you can ask seven trainers in your club, how do I lose 20 pounds? And you can get up to seven answers. It happened to some of our members when they went to other clubs. They moved to other areas. They, you know, they're, they're 20, 30 minute drive from us. And they went and said, how do I lose 20 pounds? Or I wanna do this, or I wanna do that. And they would talk to different trainers and get completely different answers. Finally, they came back to us and said, here's our goal, how do I do that? And they would talk to trainers and they'd get similar answers. And the answer's sort of like this. Well, through a well-balanced plan of diet, cardio, and resistance training, we can get you some great results. Along with that, we'll make sure you're integrating a good active recovery and stretching program. You might also want some mental and emotional support to help you along the way. So the only way to have an answer like this is to have a belief system. You got to have a process in place. This is what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. So we. I put this together in our club and every club that works with us, we have a pre-designed exercise system. It's a belief system that says this is what we do, when we do it, and why we do it. It's all functional in nature, so the, it doesn't make any sense to put clients on a ton of machines all the time. Machines have their place, but we want to get them off the machines as much as possible. That way they need us more. We get to move them in three-dimensional space. We have approved and shared exercises in this belief system. So what I mean by that is, uh, I've seen some pretty dangerous stuff going on in clubs, and that ridiculous thing, standing on stability balls. Now, most of us would go, what the heck? But imagine walking into your club one day, and you see these stupid things going on in your club. Um, 
I can't even tell you all the ridiculous things that go on, but we've seen it as owners and managers. We've seen videos of it on Facebook and on YouTube and all this. Don't think it doesn't go on in your club. So having these pre-designed exercise systems and workouts done before a trainer ever walks in is huge. Now, you might be saying, well, I don't want to get on the trainer's uh, creative side. I want you to have a little experiment this week. Go ask each one of your trainers for every workout they're going to be doing with their clients. Now, you might be going, why is that? Less than 7% of trainers pre-design workouts before they're actually working with their clients. Now, after you get that realization where you go up to 10 of your trainers and maybe one of them have actually pre-designed the workouts before they come in, now you could ask this question, tell me what you're going to do with your clients. Give me five clients' names. What are you going to do with them for the next, I don't know, 12, 18 weeks? Does the client know what's going to happen over the next 12 to 18 weeks? Do they feel that there's a uh, exercise system in place guaranteed to get them results? Or is everybody just kind of winging it? Now the next question to ask is, go to your trainers and say, can you show me what Mrs. Jones has done the last four months with you? If not, there's a problem. If your trainers can't show tracking wise what they've been doing with their clients, you're not offering the best product you should be offering as a gym. Okay, there's no track record. There's no progression in your system. So first of all, we're not getting uh, the next workouts not being done. Uh, with your trainers. A future with your trainers isn't and clients aren't being done. In other words, we're not writing systems. We're writing one workout at a time at best. But again, over 90% of the time, you're not even going to get that one workout done before the client ever comes in. And then again, we're also not tracking what they've done in the past. Here's another little thing about having a pre-designed exercise system. We should be regularly measuring our clients. Every four to six weeks, your clients should be measured. Circumference measurements, body fat measurements, both uh, blood pressure, heart rate, all of that. We even suggest doing um, their functional movement screen, screening them every like 12 weeks to see if there's progress. So we can again, guide them on what they're supposed to be doing. But if we don't have uh, anything in the past that says what they've done or anything in the future, our trainers are definitely not measuring their clients on a regular basis. Worst case scenario, the last day of every month, have a measurement day. The clients can come in and get measured. This is one of the things that having a pre-designed exercise system does for you. If you design an exercise system and the trainers are all contributing to it or following it, you have a better chance of having success. Because if you have a system that works with one person, you can replicate that system. Okay. The other thing a pre-designed workout system does is it eliminates that horrible trainer. Now I go and do 10, 12 talks a year um, all around the country. And one of the questions I ask all the time is, do you have great trainers in your staff? Some of them will raise their hand and say, yes, yeah, sort of, maybe a couple of them, whatever. And then I'll say, how many of you guys have a bad trainer on your staff? And they raise their hand. Why do we have bad trainers? Well, they're not as good as the other trainers. I don't believe in not having great trainers. Understand that at worst case scenario, you should have good trainers, if not great trainers. So having a pre-designed exercise system allows you as a gym owner to actually go back and see, do all the trainers know what they're doing? Do they know what a squat depth is? Do they know how to do the exercises? Do they all know how to use kettlebells? Do they all know how to use TRX? Do they all know how to use ropes? What are they doing with their stuff? What, what makes them a good trainer or a bad trainer? Get the exercise system out of the way so it's not the thing that's standing there making some trainers more elite than other trainers. Think about this. You could walk in and want to work with one trainer, but he's only available Tuesday and Thursday, but people really like the results that he get, gets. Man, figure out what that guy's doing, get his exercise system, and give it to other trainers. That's only smart business. Whatever's successful in the club, make everybody successful. Now, if you don't want to pre-design it, you don't want to go through the hassle because one club actually did that and they told us it took them 18 months before they could get that. 
just go ahead and buy one. Yeah, there's a couple different ways. We provide one with our exercise system that we actually guarantee that the, if the client follows every aspect of it, we're going to get their money back. And that's another thing. If you're not willing to offer a money back guarantee because of your exercise system and coaching system, you're getting left behind because all these other things are uh, Sean T's stuff, uh, P90X, all these workout systems on that your clients are being exposed to and the, the drinks and the potions and all the pills that they could take, they're all offering money back guarantees. You're not probably. And if you're not able to offer a money back guarantee, you're creating a buying problem. People have to take the risk of making a buying decision with you. Owners still say, well, I can't dictate what the trainers are doing or what the clients are doing or not doing. If you have a tracking system and an exercise system, you can do that. Um, another thing that you need to do when you're designing this exercise system or implementing is make sure it's progressive. So it's functional in nature. You get the client up for the most part, moving in three-dimensional space, using some cool toys all the time. It's progressive. So each week it gets a little bit harder or we change phases. So we go from uh, three sets of eight to supersetting a set of six with a set of 12, whatever it is. But make sure it's progressive. But you wanna repeat the exercises enough that the client gets to see some progression in their strength. One of the things that we end up with when it's just left up to the trainer and every time they come in, it's a different workout is the client never sees progression for themselves. They never get to see their strength going up, their fat loss going down. It's just really tough for the client because there's nothing they can hang their hat on. Sometimes trainers do this on purpose because if you keep the client guessing, there's not enough progression, then the client doesn't know what's going on. They don't know if they're getting results or not. So the other thing that you want to do with a pre-designed exercise system is once you've got the exercise system in place, you need to be able to give clients what they should be doing when they're not with you. So we provide a handout that's got interval cardio training, really a simple workout that has the client going up and down at a certain pace, depending on their level. And um, it's got metabolic circuits in there. So here are eight exercises I want you to do. I want you to do these four as many times as you can um, in 10 minutes. Take a break, do these four as many times as you can in a round for 10 minutes and you're done. So we provide these really simple workouts for our clients to do when they're not with us. So that is a benefit. When that client wants to come in and train twice a week with you, what do they do with the other days? Well, we just think, well, I'm not gonna give them the deluxe workout that we're training them for, which I completely agree with, but if you don't give them something, they're gonna to go to Muscle and Fiction, they're gonna to go to some website, they're gonna download something, or they're gonna buy a, a workout program for their iPhone or Android phone, and they're gonna follow something. So make them loyal to you. Give them what they want so they're more successful. Um, you also want to make sure that you're giving them some a workout that where do they put in that long steady state cardio? Most of our people are still getting on a treadmill and jogging for 45 minutes. For us, that's the last thing to do. If you're already doing three, uh, two days a week with me as a trainer, you're doing your metabolic circuits, then you're doing your interval training. You wanna train that fifth day, which I'm all for, if you're really wanting to lose the weight, go outside and take a walk. Go outside, do a light jog. Nothing that's just get your stress hormones back down. Make yourself feel better so you're recovering more. Stay active, but don't overdo it. We're also in a pre-designed exercise system. We're going to give them foam rolling and stretching. Now there's 16, 18 foam rolling exercises we can do. Give your clients three or four of them because they're not going to do that. Then every few weeks, give them a new one. So when you go to measure them every month or every six weeks, give them a new handout at worst. Okay? And then you also want to probably give them uh, a nutritional information or education program. So again, when we're giving them new handouts for the, um, uh, the interval cardio and the foam rolling that once every, uh, we do it every three weeks, but you might do it every four weeks or every six weeks, give them a nutritional handout, how to read food labels, how much sleep you should get. Um, what a good fat is, what a bad fat is, what good carbs are, what bad carbs are, what uh, supplements you should be taking. All of this information, just give it to them for free because once you've designed it, you're kind of done with it. All you gotta do is print it out again. You don't have to reinvent the wheel and you can use it for the next 10, 15 years. That's what we do and that's what we provide our clients that work with the Personal Training Department Blueprint is all this information is already done. So it's literally 
rip it out of the training log, give it to the client. If you've got five clients, rip it out of the training log, Xerox it four times, hand the five pieces of paper out, and you look like a genius. You're giving them everything they need. They don't need to go to the internet and search for information. They don't need to go download an application. They're loyal to your trainer and to the club. It is a lot of work, don't get me wrong, but over time, that client becomes more loyal to your system not to the trainer. Think about that gym owner wise. I just had a trainer walk, walk out of one of my um, talks because she got into an argument that they were her clients, not the gyms, but she got them from the gym. They've been going to the gym for years and they just decided to hire her. She was the most important thing there, which blew my mind and all the other owners that were sitting there were like their eyes were opening. This is how trainers think a lot of times. They're their clients. That's the reason why when a trainer leaves, 75 to 90% of those clients go with them. Then they stop training at the gym. They stop their membership and it's a big downfall. That's one of the reasons why owners hate or managers hate personal trainers. But if you have a system in place, an exercise system in place, and a life coaching system in place, when that trainer decides to leave, they get married, they move, go back to school, you fire them for whatever reason. If you've got systems in place long enough and it's beneficial enough to the client, you will retain 75% of those people, if not more. And that's one of the reasons why we really push having a pre-designed exercise system in place. Plus, systems work. Think about it, Les Mills exercise 20 years ago, we would have never thought about having aerobic systems. Now you cannot count the number of Group X systems that are in place. Personal training is going that way. It's getting away from the trainer being somewhat creative or not creative at all, or just downloading stuff they're finding from the internet into having more and more systems in place to be able to guarantee results. And that's what we're really after here is being able to guarantee results so that your club can stand out and offer a product nobody else can offer. So let's talk about money again. What kind of money should you be making from your personal training department? If you've got a 2,000 person club, uh, the average client's gonna spend with systems in place, especially an exercise system, they'll spend about $200 a year. You'll get up to 15, 20% penetration, but with just a 15% penetration, that's $720,000 a year in revenue. Now, how much are you actually producing? Let's say you're high, you've got a 5% penetration and you've got clients that are spending $175 a month. A 2,000 member club is only billing about $210,000. That means each and every year you're missing a half a million dollars in revenue alone from your personal training department. Think about that, 2,000 members not having systems in place is costing you half a million dollars a year in revenue. I can sure use a half million dollars a year. I hope you could too. So until our next lesson, this is Nick Osborne, helping you put systems in place to create a better personal training department.